Matrix. I'm, I'm telling you, the first war against the machines is not going to be fought with machine guns or laser guns. It's going to be fought on the keyboards, guys. An Asian university student has just invented an app that can detect whether your essay is written by ChatGPT or not. And guess what? Even though he's very smart, he's getting a lot of flack on the internet, even from fellow Asians. So let's talk about why that's a little surprising. Oh my gosh, man, I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of disappointed in the young Gen Z Asians commenting on this next <laughs> shark Instagram post, man. These 20 year olds were hating on fellow 20 year old Edward Tian, despite the, I'm just going off the evidence guys, him probably being one of the most brilliant minds of his generation, but they're just calling him a nerd. They say he has no friends. Anyway, Andrew, I'm gonna get into the points about it because I don't like what this is saying about Gen Z and their attitude towards, towards uh, embracing the anti-intellectual strain in American pop Ooh, culture. Okay, it might get a little fiery guys. Hold on to your seats, hit that like button if you're excited or interested by this conversation that we're about to have. Guys, let's get into it, man. Five points, David, what's the first one? And what what happened? What are the main responses? Why, what is everybody saying? Basically, the people were like, OMFG, this guy's my number one op. This guy was a nerd. This guy probably gets no girls. He's probably no fun to be around he's at probably parties. The, he's and probably the teacher's pet, right? Probably the teacher's pet. And you know what I didn't like about this? It's not that I didn't anticipate these responses, from non-Asians, mm. you know, Chad, Brad, Cody, Becky, but to hear from other Asians is kind of like wrong because it goes to show you the younger Gen Z is sort of embracing that American binary where you're either going to go into the smart brainiac nerd, like uncool sexless bucket, or you're going to be this cool clout driven swag drip God who's like doing drugs and having sex when you're like 13 years old. I'm not well, saying there's not fun things on both sides. Obviously this is the one our parents want. This is the one that American MTV BET wants, but I'm just saying we can't go so far into that side where we start dissing what made Asians not 100%, but like largely be successful in America. But do you think that this is different than the response that is this would have gotten from Asians maybe 10 to 15 years For ago? For sure it is because I think that all Asians 10 years ago, whether or not you were from this type of family or not, that's going to make you like build these like advanced algorithmic AI apps. You probably had a respect for it mm. or you were like, hey, my cousin does that. I'm, He's cool. You know, I'm like in the streets, but like I got to yeah. respect him. I, I mean, I think generally, and if I had to take the perspective of these commenters is that they felt uncool because they were like, dang it, man. Look, now all the non-Asians are going to see how once again, Asians are nerds and they're the teacher's pet and they're doing something uncool because right. we want to be these cool cheaters that use chat GPT for our essays. He spoiled my plans. I'll never be the right, CEO. Right. Edward oh. Tian is certainly not a Project X guy because he's not just a nerd. He's a nerd narc. <laughs> yeah. He's a nerd narc. You know, I, I think, and, and I can't help because he's our dad. So of course I know what dad would say in this situation. He's like... What is cool? Guys, why do you want to be cool? What Edward did was cool. Only 0.001% of the population can even do this. And he is going to change the world with his mind. That is cool to me. Right. <laughs> Just like a Jama rank dunk that is only available for 0.00001% of the population to achieve and build this. Yeah. Ja, what Ja Morant does on the basketball court is also cool. Yeah. And you but know what why he it does is cool too. And you know why I really didn't like it? It's because we are not asking anybody to say that Edward Tien, because he, you know, he got sharp pointy ears like a Vulcan and he kind of, you know, I'm sure people <laughs> are thinking he's like Spock, you know, half robot, half human or whatever. But I'm saying nobody's asking to call him the drip god no. or senpai no. or be like nerd bay. Nobody's trying to say that he's Young or uh, Jackson Wang or whatever Asian American influencer swag gods there are with broccoli cuts or whatever dancer everybody's looking up to. He's in his lane. But then people from this lane, like we said, right. they're trying to self-identify themselves by what identities they're trying to push away from. Right, right. Right, which leads us to point number two, David. I get it. Nobody wants to be a lame, virgin, square, uncool, whatever, like bad, boxy haircut, nerd head ass, right? You know what I mean? That's like the terms that, you know, what everybody's using on MTV, BET culture. There is a very strong anti intellectual strain in America. It's been there since P.T. Barnum and Bailey, since the conception of America, since the bloody revolutions against the British. I don't want to get too much into it. It goes go crazy. But basically, I don't like it when Asians try to buy into that because being on point and executing, whether it's on small business finances, all the way to high level academics mm. is such a huge part of Asians advantages to become successful in America. I mean, if you think about it, if you came, if your parents or your grandparents came over here as immigrants with no money, 
right? And not any sort of advantage whatsoever. And they, and they still made a good life for themselves. You know how much work and on pointness that took. Maybe a little bit of luck too, but honestly, it just took a lot of work. And so it kind of looks like that these kids are looking down on this work. Yes, he created an app that detects essays. It's kind of a, a very- a snitch app or whatever. Sni a, yeah, it's, it's not a, a snitch, snitch app because it's like the, he had to build the algorithms, yeah. It's an impressive thing to do, but it is a snitchy app, I guess. But I guess for people like us or pe other successful people, I don't think we're thinking that yeah. way because we're just like, oh, well, I don't know. I wasn't going to use ChatGPT to write my YouTube videos. And not only that, if we actually hire people, I want to know they can actually do what they say they can and they didn't just use ChatGPT to like gain their credentials. Right. What well, th This brings us to point number three. Oh, not only this, I got to stay on point number two. One last thing, oh. Andrew. It's not like... We're going to be the tallest, strongest people to scare everybody to listen to us. And we're not necessarily the most commanding or like hyper communicative. Mm. So I'm just saying, I'm not saying Asians shouldn't go be these newfound peep, fangled people and explore things in America and even explore whatever new experiences that were like taboo in the East or whatever. Right. But I'm just saying we can't look down on like traditional culture from Asia either, especially when those traditional cultures, at least some of them, I'm not talking about the emotional expressiveness of Asia, helped us become who we are. Oh, Moving on to number three, I, think Andrew, you're I get it though. Everybody, it comes down to everybody's family, okay? And here is maybe our bias in the situation. We come from a highly, highly educated family, even though we chose to choose a route in life where you don't need any education, right? Mm -hmm. And I get it. We grew up in a town where a lot of people's parents didn't even graduate high school. Right. They were refugees from various wars in Asia. You know, they're just trying to get by and raise their kids in America. And those kids, some of them chose academics. Some of them go into the streets. Some of them pick like a weird mixed gray zone route. It's hard to describe. But basically what I'm saying is everybody brings something different to the table, right? And America has always needed nerds to uplift it, even though the nerds were never looked at as cool and popular culture. I mean, I'll put it this way, Andrew. We have a cousin who was born into a business family, right? He doesn't really uh, need to be that good at numbers. He just needs to be good at relationships and networking and not lose the money. But basically what I'm saying is a lot of times people look at like rich white people in America, how they're not good at math and they're not good at algorithms or the hardcore work. And they're like, oh, look at how rich they are. They're even richer than Edward Tien's family like doing all the work. And I'm like, yeah, that's true because they own a lot of assets already. But if your family is not in that type of situation, you can't look down on the guys who are actually like, building the real work mm -hmm. you know what i mean because you're not in a position to just flip assets and do arbitrage that's the, the worst thing i could imagine is asian americans looking at like rich white people who have multi-generational wealth or are born into a lot of asset management and then try to take that attitude on for their life when they don't have that volume of assets to flip around right 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 all right you know what and that brings us to point number four david i think edward is the hero that we didn't expect we'd get. Because here's the thing, guys. I'm not saying that we're going to go heads up with AI and there's going to be a battle of the humans versus machines anytime soon. I'm not saying I'm not one of those people. But I will say this, that if there is ever a war against the machines, it's going to be a war against the programs. And our general is going to look more like Edward Tien than you think. Maybe it might not be Edward. He's not going to look like Benedict Cumberbatch, okay? It, that's going to be the movie version. Yeah, it'll be a nerd of some type, okay? That's what I'm saying. He is going to be the John Connor because he can program something that can at least detect AI. So you're saying, Andrew, when the rise of the robots inevitably comes and the AI chat GPT like 27 wants to bug out and, you know, bite the human hands, you're going to need some Edward Tans to come in I, and <laughs> code on like six mechanical keyboards, some weapons to destroy I'm, Mr. Smith and the Matrix. I, I'm, I'm telling you, the first war against the machines is not going to be fought with machine guns or laser guns. It's going to be fought on the keyboards, guys. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyways, long story short, Andrew, this is my fifth point, And this is a point where I am empathizing with the people who are like, dude, Edward Tien's a loser, man. He ain't cool, man. I'm over here with my broccoli cut. Yeah, clearly. My he, friends yeah, that do I, drugs or sell drugs. We chilling. We're cooler than Edward Tien. For sure. In an American, like, hip, you know, weed smoking sense, for sure you're cooler. And you probably have a different social life. That's not even close. I, I'm not, like, trying to take that away from anybody. And I empathize with that because that was me to some extent. You know what I mean? I, I have an appreciation for both sides. But I'm just saying that basically, like, when you're in these lanes, you can't hate on this lane because it feels like the nerd Asians are being more 10 out of 10 successful in the nerd lane. Whereas the cool clout Asians, it feels like our cap has been like five or six. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody got two lanes in America, and I hate that America's set up this way, but it is what it is, right? I can somewhat agree in the macro picture that you either got the cool bucket or the nerd bucket, but it feels like the Asians that went into the nerd bucket are rising higher on that respective ladder. You mean the... To put it plainly, it feels like Asians are doing a better job of being nerdy than the cool Asians are doing a, a good of a job of being cool. Yes. I would compare it to Asians are having almost 10 out of 10 success in golf, tennis, swimming, mm. diving, figure skating versus Asians getting better but still struggling in the NFL, NBA uh, like NHL and, you know, less so MLB, but yeah. Right, right. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, I think that that is But I'm just saying that that would be, wouldn't that be like Yuta Watanabe hating on Naomi Osaka because she's like 10 out of 10 at tennis? But he wouldn't do that. He probably loves her because they're both from Japan and they're both just showing love to each other because they're Asian. Hey, man, I think there's a lot to unpack here. You guys, I don't know if you think we took it too deep, but any, that's what we do on this channel. We taking it deep. We th overthinking it. No, I already it. know that one of these broccoli cup dude, I was just joking. It ain't even that serious, bro. <laughs> but shit, you know, have no keezy. Yeah, all right. I'll be honest. I don't think Edward Tan is really phased by these comments. And I don't think they're just internet comments. I don't think anybody's going up to this, uh, going up to the Princeton campus, being like, "That's Edward. He's corny. He's a teacher's pet. He doesn't want us to cheat." I don't think anybody's doing that, by the way. But. It just kind of, it's a signal. It's a, it's symbolic. It's a symbolic of just how assimilated to some like anti-intellectual aspects of America, the Gen Z Asians. All right. Become. Well, you guys let us know in the comments down below. We shared what we think. Okay. You guys let us know what you think about Edward. Did he do a good thing? Did he do a corny, cheesy, nerdy thing? Or is he just doing his thing? I don't know. You let us know in the comments down below. And until next time, we out. Peace.